Start my sound technology. Welcome everyone to One Million Cups. My name is Chris Smith and I'm one of the volunteer organizers. Thank you. Uh, as I mentioned, I am a volunteer and I'm joined by a lot of other volunteers. Those three guys, actually all the volunteers, just raise your hands. Let's thank all the volunteers for that. So we work on your behalf to bring in quality speakers to inspire you, to motivate you, to support one another. And actually I first reached out to Vic uh, probably about a year ago. So it just goes to show you how long it takes sometimes to get a guest speaker in here to present. Um, he's a busy guy, he's got a lot going on, but as an organizer, we're extremely persistent and we're focused on getting good quality people here to speak. Uh, because what we want to do is we want to inspire you guys to pursue your dreams, to take action, pursue your ventures, that's what it's all about. So right now, in 115 communities across the country, our 1 million cups meetings. Average attendance is about 28. Ours is closer to four. We're in the top 10 in average now. We are in the top 10. Cool. So today's speaker, yes, thank you. Today's speaker is Victor Easier. Make sure I get that right. And he is the owner of Bully Me Now. He's also the uh, the chief instructor, he's got a great studio, they teach MMA, self-defense, he's got a great story, focuses a lot on, on anti-bullying, I love his message, and if you don't pay attention, he's going to kick your ass. <laughs> so without further ado, Ben. trying to be an entrepreneur, always wanting to do anything I could do to make money but be happy while doing it. So I did that as a child. I did everything random from selling lizards and turtles to starting teen night dances. So that just followed through throughout my life, no matter what job I had or what title I was in, or whatever position, I always wanted to do my own thing. So my family up in New York owns a plumbing supply company. Where I worked and was totally miserable. Selling toilets is terrible. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of money in there, everybody has to go to the bathroom. But it was, I knew I didn't want to do it for my whole life. So I started, I'm sorry, I'm gonna go here. I was always into martial arts. Always training, never stopped training, always into different types of martial arts. If we're gonna speak business, and I don't tell many people this, I did a type of karate for a long time and then got beat up and I was like, okay, wait a minute, this, is, this did not help me. What will help me? So I found all the different styles of martial arts that I train and teach now. And what happened was I was going into all of these gyms and I started traveling, I wanted to train with the best and I started realizing that all of their kids' programs were so focused on financial aspects of selling programs and selling belt systems, and selling all of this stuff, and it was very basic. There was no flair, there was no emotion, there was no positive message in all of these places that I was going and training in. So I decided that I was gonna, I had goals. So 25, buy a house in Florida, 30, get a Bentley, you know, all of the positive goals that you, set for yourself. So I did the house in Florida and I fell in love with this area. I had no plan on doing anything like this. I went, I wanted to train here. I tried to train in some of the schools. It just wasn't, it was totally what I was telling you I experienced elsewhere, but on a higher level. So we're in the middle and I say we're in the middle because I brought friends with me to come and we set up a house here for our vacation home. And we're in the middle of going back and forth and just having fun. 
I'm in the gym working out, I'm training for a fight, and my mother comes up to me and she says, she starts crying. She says, how, how are you so confident? How are you able to just come into this gym every day? I watch you every day and you just walk around like you're the biggest person in the world and you, you know, your abilities are just so amazing. And she's going on and on. And I'm like, well, where are you getting at? She's like, I'm worried about my son taking his life. So I get a little emotional because this, this child is the reason why I'm here. So I said, immediately I just said, well, let's bring him to my house. Let me talk to him. Let me get to know him a little bit. And let's see what we can do. So he came and I started training him in my basement one day at a time. Built him up a little bit more and more and more. And he turned around to me and was like, what do I tell the kids now? And I just, it just came out. I was like, tell them, bully me now. That's it. You're, you're, aware. you're aware, you're ready, you're confident, I'm confident for you, and I know you can take care of yourself. You don't need to fight that. That parent had a friend, that parent had a friend, that parent had a friend. All of a sudden, I have these two gentlemen here with me helping me with these kids. I started training them, they started helping me with the kids. But I knew, or I was training and fighting in all the gyms in, in New Jersey, so I couldn't open up there. We came back here, and it just hit me that I, I love this area, I know I love to be here, I don't know anybody here, let's start it. Now the business stuff comes into play. <laughs> Calculations. I'm very, very, very big on calculations and numbers. If there was anything I was good at in school, it was math. Apparently, there's a lot of people to be good at. So, very simply, I found the location, got the numbers. And a business that I'm in, fortunately for me, it is as simple as a child is worth a certain amount of month and a certain amount of children to cover the numbers. That became a little bit more than that. Because I knew I could cover the numbers. I knew that I can get out there, which I did. You see, we're branded. And if there's anything I like to do when we show up somewhere, is we show up branded. And if any of you guys know who I am, or have heard of me, or the program, or know somebody that knows somebody, they'll all tell you the same thing. Our, our vehicles, are, our, our, we're always branded. We're always, we always have our cars, we're always talking to people, and that's how everybody in, in the county here came to know us. We were, we were beating the street when we first opened, everywhere. So, once I realized that the numbers could make sense, I jumped into the first lease, quickly outgrew that. So I wanted to get 80 kids, 80 kids made salaries for the guys, paid the rent, paid me a very small salary, and I was able to have my life goal and dream of having the most comfortable place for a parent and child to go to and have them learn some awesome martial arts that will actually do them some good and feel good, create friendships, and find happiness that they maybe couldn't have found elsewhere. So now once now my goals were once I had to start once I started to make money, it had to start turning quickly. So as soon as we started to make money, I pulled it back and expanded. I got a, a bigger place, and we set in there. And I said, "All right, we're going to get a, another 30 kids, and we're going to finish signing the paperwork on the building that we're in today, um, which I'm proud to say I bought and I own. Okay, down at the old Port Orange Street." which is all things that you have to calculate. Because now I'm going back to scaling back because I'm not paying a lease, I'm paying a mortgage. So I'm paying a mortgage, I own it. And the mortgage on now my third place is less than the lease on my first place. But I had to put out that expense on the first place because the location was key. I, could not, I knew I just couldn't open up in a warehouse district and expect that everybody was gonna be walking through my doors. Okay, that's why I'm still not in the warehouse district. I don't care. I'll still be, even as the name has grown now, I still want to be visible. I still want to be known. I still want everybody to know where I'm at right away. If any one of you were to go to anybody in the street and say, you know where bullying me now is, yeah, it's the old Port Orange Six, but from La Fiesta. That's, that's the goal, to have people be able to access you quickly 
and easily. So we got into this place here, and now we're in it, and there, there's been kids and people coming through every day. Now we don't just have a kids program, we have a full women's program, um, which I have some of my students and our instructors here now. And we have a full adult program, but it's continuing to send the same message. That hasn't changed across the board at all. There's no tough guy systems in our school, whether it be the adults or the children. And I feel that having an adult feel comfortable to come into your place, in the same way a child feels comfortable, is just as important. And you know, it's funny, because I had a couple of dads come in and want to test me and see what I know, and it didn't work out well for them. <laughs> But they still sign their kids up, so, so I was happy about that. Now where I'm at, I'm looking at the program, and I start discussing with my affiliates, who are some of the top people in the world in martial arts and have hundreds of schools across, across the world. So I start speaking to them. My message was this. I want to change the way kids and parents do martial arts. I want to make it as easy as going to, to a baseball tryout. So in that message, I created a manual, created a system, created a curriculum. This is all within two years now. May 15th was, was two years. Okay. So I created this manual, which last month was just put out into the organization and we recently signed 14, I think 14 or 16 schools all across the world. So now the Bully Me Now program is in, I think, four or five different countries and 16, 14 to 16 schools. And we're, continuing. we're just getting started in having this be the youth program that all the schools are, are able to use and change the message for the way martial arts is viewed. So my goal, when I thought about it, was to just get a few schools. How cool would it be to be in, in Thailand? How cool would it be to be in London? How cool would it be to, to be everywhere? Now we're outgrowing our current facility and have to start looking in other cities locally so that my coaches can go and start their own schools. Which we, we discussed would always have to be a situation where there would be a main hub. The finances have to make sense. And it goes back to step one, phase one, the rent, the amount of children, the salaries, the, every bill that we could possibly have all gets put back into play. And we get to start phase one all over again. So that's what I got for you guys. If you have any questions, I'll be ready to answer them.